Do you like hamburgers? Add us some lettuce, tomatoes, cheese, condiments, and you have a delicious meal. Unless you're Joe Metheny. Ladies and gentlemen of all ages, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Angry Meat Production. We appreciate you coming in and letting us be a part of your lives week in and week out. We hope to do our best to present you with something that your eardrums delight in. Whether you're looking at us on YouTube or Rumble or listening to us on Spotify, Google, or Anchor, or any of the other podcast services that we are currently on or trying to get on. We thank you. And if you don't mind, at the end of every episode, stop by. Leave us a comment. Leave us a like. If it asks for five stars, we'll take five stars, even if you don't like us. Five stars are what it's all about. With that being said, we hope you enjoy our attempt to make our advocation, our vocation. Ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today on Psychos and Sociopaths, we're going to go over Joseph Roy Metheny. And uh, yeah, this is a weird one. Thank you, Chris Jaka, for uh, sending me this. Uh, shout out to our other host. He sent me this one. And it's 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 a weird one. Now. Starting out, Joseph Roy Methane, uh, Metheny was born March 2nd, 1954, and he died on August 5th, 2017. Now, he's a serial killer and rapist in the Baltimore, Maryland area. Now, early in life, Metheny's attorney said that he had been neglect as a child and that made him depressed. That his father was an alcoholic who killed, uh, who was killed in a car accident when his uh, methane was six, and that his mother ne ne uh, neglected her six children while working double shift uh, jobs outside of the home. Methane said his parents often spent uh sent him to live with other families in foster like arrangements. Matheny Foster claimed that his mother was dead. His mother said that they were somewhat poor and she had to work hard as a waitress, barmaid, and a uh, food truck driver. But she provided her children with a normal family life. And the children had never gone hungry or been put in the homes of 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 other family members that Methany had claimed. She said that Methylene was above average student, always polite and not mean as a child. She said that he was smart and he had uh, a good childhood. If he was neglected, it was his own fault and it was a pretty good home. Uh, Methylene joined the U.S. Army when he turned 19 in 1973. His mother said that he served in Germany, although he claimed that he served in a tour in Vietnam and became addicted to heroin while in an artillery unit there. His mother said that she had no recollection of him ever serving in Vietnam, and the circumstances of his service were reported as unverified in press reports. American involvement in Vietnam had ended by that time. Methanine uh, seldom uh, contacted his mother after joining the army. She said he just kept uh, drifting further and further away. I think the worst thing that ever happened to him was drugs. It's sad, sad story, she says. Now, Methany was ironically known as tiny in the 1990s, even though he was six foot one, 185 centimeters, large frame and overweight. He had spent uh, t time in the bars, uh, living uh, with bands of homeless men and makeshift camps in South Baltimore. Now, if you take a look at his picture, I swear 
that when he sent me this, I was like, why is he put uh, sending me John Wayne Gacy? Because he looks almost just like John Wayne Gacy. It's 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 it literally unreal. If you look at a lot of a photo, I mean, there's some difference and everything like that, but he he's a dead ringer for John Wayne Gacy. He could want a John Wayne Gacy lookalike contest. Like, that's for damn sure. Now, and he spent all of his money on crack cocaine, heroin, and liquor. However, he held a steady job as a forklift driver and universally described as intelligent, well-spoken, and very well-mannered. Uh, Methanine murdered uh, Kathleen Ann Magaziner in 1994, a 39-year-old woman, and buried her bottle, uh, body in a shallow grave on the site of the factory where he worked. The body remained there for about two years. He later said that he had strangled her and that he dug her up, uh, dug up her skeleton skeleton six months later to put her head in a box and threw the rest in the trash metheny was uh trialed for murder for the different case in 1995 for allegedly killing randall brewer and randy uh, piker with an axe at a homeless tent city campsite under baltimore hanover street bridge there have been disputes involving rival groups of homeless men wow Okay, that okay. I'm just it just popped in my head that there's like rival gangs of homeless people, which is weird, but I guess it's not unheard of. Uh, and Larry almost was convicted of stealing the murder weapon and using it to kill Everett Dolloway, another a homeless man. The bodies were discovered on August 2nd, 1995, the same day that. Uh, Dolly was killed. Almost was arrested uh, and accused of the first green murder and pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of manslaughter. He was released after uh, serving one year and nine months of an eight year sentence. A jury concluded in July 1996 that there was inf uh, insignificant evidence to convince Medley, uh, Metheny uh, of murdering Brewer or Piker. But he later said that he was guilty of those murders. Uh, Methany killed uh, Kimberly Lee Spacer in mid-November 1996 by stabbing her with a knife. He kidnapped uh, Kitty Kita Kemper on December 8, 1996 and attempted to rape her. According to prosecutors, he shared drugs with Kemper in a trailer where he was living uh, at a pallet factory site. She refused to have sex with him and ran uh, ran out the trailer. So he chased her, beat her, dragged her back into the trailer and pulled down her pants and attempted to rape her. Kemper said that he had attempted to murder her, saying, I'm going to kill you, bury you in the woods with the other girls. She escaped through a window of the trailer and fled to police officers in the area. Metheny then asked a friend to help him bury the body of Spencer, which he had been hiding in the factory since killing her a month earlier. The friend reported it to the police in December 15, 1996. Metheny was uh, arrested and charged with her murder the same day. The owner of the business was arrested with Metheny as they left a Christmas party and was charged for accessory after the fact for allegedly disposing of evidence. Methany began confessing to other murderers as well as the Spencers. He led police to a shallow grave where he had reburied Magaziner and decap uh, with the decapitated uh, remains. Much of the skull was missing, but the police was able to identify mentions by dental records. Police said that he had chosen young uh, white sex workers who had addicted to heroin, co cocaine, cocaine, cocaine. Uh, sorry, Red, I was watching, uh, Red, what was it? Red, uh, fuck, it was on a fortune Red Faction or some shit like that. Anyways, uh, the killing also involved, uh, burial, assault, uh, sexual assault, brutal, sorry, brutal sexual assault. Uh, he was indicated in killing Tony Lynn. Inksna, uh, 28, but 
Those charges were later dropped for lack of evidence. He claimed that he also killed three other prostitutes along Was uh, Washington Boulevard in Baltimore. Although there was no evidence of most of the crimes of uh, other than his confession, he said that uh, that he, uh, he had thrown bodies in Patskibo River. Help me out, Stephen Hawking's. Patapsco. Ah, Patapsco uh, River, and that he uh, they had never been found. Baltimore Sun uh, newspaper reported in 1997 that it was clear, it was not clear how truthful his claims about how many people he's killed, although he has uh, said he killed up to 10 people. Uh, his attorney said that he is remorseful and that drugs and alcohol had changed his personality made him violent and if you look at the interviews that he's did he really didn't care uh let me get down here yeah th this article didn't uh th this article actually bypassed what he actually said in, in a lot of his interviews uh he literally said that he opened up a roadside barbecue place which we know in texas just because you make hamburgers doesn't mean you are a person that barbecues. Yeah, I said that. But anyways, you're grilling. You're grilling. You're a griller. I'll give you that. Use a grill to make your hamburgers and hot dogs and chicken, whatever. Or well, still a steak too, but if you're a barbecue person, you're doing ribs, you're smoking it, you're boom brisket. Smoking it, uh, pork shoulder. Oh, God, real barbecue knows around barbecue. But anyways, but he actually said in his interview that he opened up a roadside venue to uh, sell hamburgers, and the hamburger meat that he was using was surprise, surprise, human flesh. Said it tasted like pork. And if you add in regular hamburger meat, uh, you'll never know the difference. And uh, that's what he sold in the roadside. That was the intro. That's the reason why I did the intro. Yes. He sold and ate people for uh, as hamburgers. So, during his sentencing, he was tried in 1997 in the Kemper case. And was given a sentence of 50 years for kidnapping and attempting a sexual assault. He was a... Uh, acquitted of attempted murder for her uh he was sentenced to death in 1998 for the uh, murder of spencer at his sentencing hearing he said that he committed murders because he enjoyed it he got a rush out of it and got high off of it and no real excuse why other uh other than that he liked to do it same uh, in August 1998, he pleaded guilty to murder and robbed magaziner and prosecutors sought the death penalty in the case as well. He received a sentence of life imprisonment in that case. His death sentence was overturned in 2000, and the sentence for the murder of Spencer was reduced to life, life without a parole. Uh, the uh, rotation of, uh, for the death penalty was, and the murder had been committed in committing a robbery. But the evidence included that robbery was uh, not his motive. Now, a lot of they they didn't put a lot of this on the article that I, I picked up on this guy. But yeah, he uh, on his interviews though, he basically stated that he liked killing, he liked uh, cannibalism, uh, and he he was just a all around shit pump. So. Uh, he, uh, a lot of the interviews, you'd see how dead he was when he was saying it. He, they prosecuted him for two murders, but, uh, and, and later on they found the third, uh, they got gathered evidence for the third. He ended up, uh, that was the life with no parole, uh, sentencing. Now on that, he actually said that he killed 10 more people, but no evidence or, uh, uh, any anything to prosecute him for to convict, but we're going off of what he said. I think he actually killed 13 people, honestly. 
if you look how he acts in uh, during the interviews and how he perceives himself, he had no care in the world. Was it the drugs? Probably a little bit, but probably the fact that he was psychotic and evil. So uh, this is going to be a quick episode this week. I'd still thank you, Chris Jacka. I was wondering what I was going to do this week, who was uh, who was going to go over. Uh, a lot on my plate uh, dealing with uh, so much stuff. I love doing this. I love telling people what kind of killer stuff they have. Uh, and just the entertainment value of me stumbling over this whole articles and everything. Uh, there, There is one one killer that I was going to go over that's from Russia. A might be a two-parter because there's a lot of information on this guy. But next week week that was that's what it's gonna be i'm gonna i'm gonna but as like people like to say i'm gonna pull up my bootstraps and i'm gonna get to it but everybody thank you for all listening thank you all for watching if you're watching this and have a good day goodbye